One of the most powerful color grading tools that we have as Colorist in DaVinci Resolve is Resolve's built-in color management engine. It gives us access to wide gamut color processing, which allows us to work with our footage in a bigger color space and have more flexibility. And it gives us access to some powerful tools such as the HDR color primaries, which allow us to make really precise adjustments to our footage. But what if your camera is not supported by DaVinci Resolve? Are you out of luck? Not quite. I'm gonna teach you a method that I teach my students called color managing the color management. Here's how it works. Here we are in a regular non-color managed timeline in DaVinci Resolve. And we have some footage from the Fuji X-H2 shot in F-Log2 and some footage from the Z-Cam E2 F6 shot in Z-Log2. And we don't have an input color space to use color space transform with this footage because we don't have resolve support. But what we do have are manufacturer LUTs or plugins. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this LUT on to node one. And you can see here that we do have a nice Rec 709 correction. However, one of the drawbacks of working in a non-color managed color space is it doesn't matter how bright I make the image, I'm not going to be able to use some powerful tools such as the HDR color primaries because we can see here that no matter how bright it is, I'm not breaking past 100 nits, right? So let's go ahead and delete that. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab a still here in our gallery. This is going to be our control image. And then for the Zcam footage, I'm going to use the Zcam color plugin here. And I'm going to grab a still so we have another control image for this clip. And now let's go ahead and go back to clip one. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go into our file, project settings, color management. And from here, we're going to go into a YRGB color managed timeline and go into the HDR wide gamut. So the DaVinci wide gamut is where we're going to work. And Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 is our output color space because that's what we're working with here on our reference monitor. And that's what our graphical user interface is also set to. But more so importantly, our reference monitor. We're going to hit save. Now we can see here that a change has happened to the footage and that we're no longer getting, let's match reference frame wipe here so it's exact, we're no longer getting this original image, we're getting an image that's a bit darker. Well, that's because we have a color management mismatch. This is where we are going to go ahead and color manage the color management. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a node after node one and create a node before node one. So we should have a total of three nodes. And I'm going to go ahead and apply two color space transforms one to node one, and then one to node three. And before I do anything, I'm going to make sure that my input color space on these clips is set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. We'll know if this works because we should still be in our log environment when we are starting. And so from here, we need to undo the color management and give the LUT the input color space it's looking for, which is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So we're going to change the DaVinci Wide Gamut and the DaVinci Intermediate as our input color space and gammas, and then go to what the LUT is expecting, which is Rec 709 in Gamma 2.4. Now, we have an adjustment, but it looks like we're working with this HDR blown out image. Well, that's because the timeline color space is now in Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, but it's expecting DaVinci Wide Gamut. Well, now that we've given the LUT its correct input, let's give the timeline its correct input, which is our color processing mode that we chose for color management. So let's undo that. We're going to go from Rec 709 in Gamma 2.4 into the DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate Gamma. Now, if we play our still, we can see that there is no change whatsoever. And then we can see that after node four, without even making the image brighter, we're already breaking past 100 nits, which means we have more flexibility. So now what we can go ahead and do is we can grab our still here, apply it to our other Fuji film clip, so apply grade, 
that worked out. I'm going to go ahead and apply the grade to our Zcam clip here, but I'm going to reset the node here with the LUT and add in the Zcam color plugin, which is also expecting Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And then we can go ahead and see that when we play the still, we're also getting the correct output that we were getting. We were working in a non-color managed timeline. We're also breaking 100 nits, which means we have more flexibility. From there, you can go ahead, create nodes four, five, six, etc. build out your node tree and grade as normal. If you'd like to learn more about color grading, check out the link in the description down below titled Introducing Colorist HQ, where you can join my color grading community where I teach live twice a month every other Tuesday. There's more information about that in the link in the description down below. Also, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications if you have not. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions. Follow me on social media. The links are in the description down below. And my beautiful people, now more than ever, if you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, guys. And as always, stay fabulous. I'm Sydney. I will see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.